<laughs> this week on Game On, months after missing a shot at their repeat, the Lynx have reloaded, they're ready for another run at the title, and their number one pick is here. You'll meet the newest point guard, another Lindsay, running the show. It's the biggest sports movie to hit theaters in some time. Game On, excited to have one of Jackie Robinson's real-life friends in the house. He's my partner on the K-Twin Final Call, and besides being a big Twins fan, few know their music, like Jason Nagel, and the Mayax win sprint to the final days of school and events is on. We're packed. We're ready to go. It's time to get your game on. Now, from the local Irish pub in downtown Minneapolis, it's Game On with Rod Simons. It is Game On, powered by the local. Great to have you with us on what is a busy day. Now that it's nice, we've shed our parkas and our boots. We're going to be outside with the chef. We're going to be talking about everything. we got baseball and basketball, little twins, some music on tap. So fasten your seatbelts for the next 28 minutes and 30 seconds. we got a great show for you. But we always start Game On by the numbers. And when we look at the numbers, we find the Twins are back with home games against the Sox from Chicago and Boston. The Vikings continue their offseason workouts with veterans as OTAs arrive soon. United FC Soccer kicks into high gear this month. And the Lynx open exhibition games as the WNBA season tips in three weeks. With the 12th pick in the 2013 WNBA draft, the Minnesota Lynx select Lindsey Moore from the University of Nebraska. Lindsey Moore, 5'9", Huskies career leader in starts and minutes played, fourth in school history. She loves to shoot from the outside and three-point field goals. Sitting here with number one, 12th overall, Lindsey Moore in the house. Welcome Thank to you. Minneapolis. Thank you for having me. Ha great to have you here. Born and raised in the Pacific Northwest. Yep. Go to Nebraska, rewrite the record books. It has your name written all over it. <laughs> and then you're picked by the Lynx who have a point guard named Lindsay as well. Yes. Minnesota loves point guards named Lindsay. I, I guess so. You know, it's it's been really cool to get to know Lindsay and just see what all she's about. You know, I've looked up to her so much growing up. So it's really, I'm trying not to be like star shocked, yeah, but yeah. you know, but it's, re it's really cool to be around her. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but I did want to ask you, you walk into practice and there's kind of like her airness playing right on Maya Moore. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a first impression of Maya Moore. What was yours? Um, you know, she's she's very much about having fun out there on the court. You know, you can tell that that's one of the things that she wants to make sure she's always doing, but she, she's she, a player. she is, you know, she is definitely tough nosed and, you know, she's not going to be okay with just like, oh, you know, that was good enough. No, she's going to make it great. And so that's one of the things that's really cool and like something I'm going to learn from her yeah. is that she's going to bring it every single time. You're taking Candace Wiggin minutes, which were very, very important. You're really stepping into a place where you're going to play with a very good championship basketball team. That's got to be just the most exciting thing in the world. It is. You know, as soon as I heard my name in Minnesota, I definitely was like, this is probably the best situation yeah. I could have put myself into, you know? And so it's been really, really cool to just get out there on the court and just have that expectation of, you know what, we're going to win and we're going to be champions. So it's been really cool to step into. So I bet you have more butterflies at practice here than ever at Nebraska. Oh yeah, you know Nebraska, I was almost like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do today? But yeah. here I'm like, oh my gosh, all these people I get to be around, like it's so exciting. Yeah. Has Coach Reed been yelling at you yet? Um, no. Because I hear she's a yeller <laughs> in practice. Yeah, you know, she hasn't really got, been getting on me too much, so that's uh, kind of nice. Get, she'll get to but, you. But yeah, she'll, she'll loosen up, I think, a little bit with me and then just get after me, so, but so, I'm ready. So I hear you got to watch for Brunson's elbows and Maya Moore swooping by you on the baseline and mm -hmm. it's just a, uh, it's, it's a basketball 401, isn't it? Oh, it is, you know, and it's been so cool to see what they do so well up close and personal. You know, you, you don't always get to watch that and, and see them do it as much on the TV, but you know, when you're up and right there, you like see it happen right before your eyes. Last question for you. How does it feel now that you've arrived? You're in the big time, I mean, this is pro basketball. This is what you dream about doing as a kid and when you were a toddler out in the Pacific Northwest thinking, should I go to the University of Washington <laughs> or Nebraska? And mm -hmm. now you're here. It's it's so surreal to think about that. You know, I've I've watched a lot of these WBA players on TV, and now I'm going to beat one of them. You know, but it's it's so cool to see how much and how far the league has come since then. Oh, it's it's awesome. So it's it's been really like really cool to be a part of. I want my daughter to have a jump shot just like yours. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> what number will you wear? Double zero. 
Really? Yep. Double zero. That's awesome. Yep. Did you wear that in college too? I did. Um, and a lot of it is because my last name has two O's in it. Yeah. And so I just kept kept the two O's. See, I knew about the number, but I wanted to find out why. Because everybody mm -hmm. has a story behind it. Yep. We're, we're going to be your biggest fans. Thank you. I appreciate it. So make sure that you come back. Yeah, I will for sure. You're the best. Thanks Lindsay for having Moore, me. Lindsay Moore, double zero. Only here on Game of Catch me talking twins all season long on their new home, 96.3 K-Twin FM. Minnesota favorite Jason Nagel joins me for the K-Twin final call after each and every twins broadcast. Get updates at ktwin.com and at gameontvmn.com. It's radio for us. The K-Twin final call with Game On Flair, only at 96.3 K-Twin FM. You gotta see this. Up next, one of Jackie Robinson's friends, the man who knew him when he was a young lad. It's 42 in real life. But first, it's the K-Twin voice of the fan asking, how do the twins look to you now? Well, I'll tell you what. I didn't think they'd be only two games under 500, so I'm, I think that they're doing pretty darn good. Hey guys, I'm Andre Kirilenko. Chris, good to meet you. I'm nice Justin. Nice to meet you guys. Nice so what's up? You. I'm a huge fan. I have almost the whole team as an autograph, and you're one of the few guys that I don't have. What do I have to do to get it? Hey chica, habla mi lengua. Come here, what you think, ma. Shake it, baby. You can just have a free one. Thanks. Everybody knows who the real is in the building. They don't agree on much, these two, but they do love K-Twin, these two. Hey, Guardy, you know the twins are on our favorite radio station? Yeah, we're excited to be on FM. <sighs> Will you start a radio? Make it out to uh, Keith and Kevin? Kevin and Keith. Keith and Kevin's fine. Kevin, then. Get to, how about combine it? Kethevin? How would you spell that? K-E-I-T-H-E-I-K-E-T-E-V-E-N. Hey, it's Meat Sauce, and it's time once again for the Bar Abilene Trivia Question. The question is, who's played the most games for the Wild? Don't touch that dial. The answer before the end of Game On. Welcome back to Game On TV. By now, you've either seen or heard of the new blockbuster Baseball oriented, it's 42, the story of Jackie Robinson's early days, breaking the color barrier, playing baseball with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And when you talk about Jackie Robinson, yes, he's no longer with us. This man knew him as a tadpole. It's Ron Rabinovitz. How are you, How sir? How are you? Good Great to have you, you back with us. And Thank you. You and I have uh, been crossing paths over the last month. We have. And I'm just so delighted to, to ha finally have you on Game On because when we talk about you knowing him as a youngster, right. this just wasn't a passing meeting. This is a friendship that you still have with the Robinson family. Tell us about That's it. That's correct, yeah. I met uh, Jackie in 1953. I was seven years old. My dad wrote him a letter, told him how much I admired him. And he didn't tell me that he wrote because he didn't, you know, so he was afraid that he might not answer. Right. So he wrote back with an autograph picture and he said next time the club's in Milwaukee playing the Braves, he'd love to meet me. So we went to a Dodger Brave game and Rod, it was the first game I was ever at that I couldn't wait for it to end <laughs> because I wanted to go and meet him. So after the game we went down to the locker room and waited for him to come out. When he came out I ran up to him with about 50 other kids who were looking for autographs and I said, Jackie, I'm Ronnie Rabinovich, do you remember me? And he said, sure I do. My dad standing over my shoulder said, sure, Jackie. With the thousands of letters you get, how would you remember? He says, no, I remember your dad wrote me on lawyer stationery. My father was an attorney. Yeah. And from that time on, we became the very dearest of friends. All through my growing up years, he used to write letters to me, and I'd write back to him in longhand yeah. to take time to write to a kid. It was just amazing. Not the computer era back then. I no. mean, everything was long. <laughs> All everything, handwritten letters. And you saved everything. I did, I did. And they weren't, they weren't long, short letters. It wasn't Dear Ronnie, Good Luck, Jackie. Mm. I mean, they were long letters. You are still <sighs> close to the Robinson family. I am. And in fact, some of, you spent some of the final moments with Jackie Robinson back in the day. I did. I was with him in New York um, six months before he passed away. 
uh, his health had failed pretty badly. He uh, was blind in one eye, going blind in the other eye. He was suffering from, di suffering from diabetes. He had had a heart attack, and he was in pretty rough shape. And I remember it was pretty sad for me because I had to take him by the arm and help him down the couple steps into this restaurant. Right. And he was so happy to see me, and he wanted to hear all about my family, and I, of course, about his. And afterwards, I hailed him a cab and got him settled and leaned in and kissed him on the cheek and told him how much I loved him. Oh, my gosh. And that was the last time I saw him. You're very excited about the release of 42 because it sheds positive light on the Robinson legacy. That's correct. It really does. Uh, I've seen it twice. It's a magnificent movie. Uh, it's PG-13. Uh, truthfully, if, if they really showed... What the way on. it was. The way it was, they'd have it wouldn't be PG-13. Right. But um, I thought they did a tremendous job. And the thing that that's remarkable to me is that people think about Jackie, but Rachel Robinson, his wife, his widow, she's 90 years old, by the way. God bless her. She's still going strong. Yes, she is. She was the only wife that was allowed to travel with her husband during the games. So she was in the stands listening to all these cat calls, oh my uh, watching her husband being thrown thrown at at his head. And in those days, all yeah, they didn't they didn't have helmets; they had baseball caps. So she in herself is a remarkable lady. Now, after he passed away, the following year, she started the Jackie Robinson Foundation, which is a scholarship program for children of color and minorities to go to college. Mm -hmm. They have the greatest graduation rate of any scholarship program in the United States, 97%, which wow. is way over the national average. And Jackie would have been so proud because education was important to him. That's, that's yeah. good, great stuff. You stay with us. You bet. We've only scratched the surface. More on Jackie <laughs> Robinson, the movie 42, and little Ronnie Rabinowitz <laughs> next on Game On. You can keep up with the T-Wolves in the NBA 24-7 with my weekly blog. It's Simon Says at Timberwolves.com. Simon Says full of inside information. We keep you connected to all things inside the team from player movement to special promotions and so much more. It's interactive, so weigh in. Drop me a note at rod at gameontvmn.com. It's Simon Says every Thursday at Timberwolves.com. We're not finished. Ron's back with more on Jackie Robinson. But before that, it's the K-Twin voice of the fan asking, how do the Twins look to you now? I think they're doing pretty good. And actually, um, I think the pitching staff is doing better than they projected. Especially the relievers. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's a good thing for them. That's why I can't go back to Cleveland ever again. <laughs> hey, do you actually looking like your profile picture? Do you, you're not having a mustache. Well, I do kind of have a mustache. But it's, so. it's, it's a beard. Right, so you're not having a mustache. <laughs> um, those are my friends over there in case this was a total train wreck. Yeah, actually those are my friends uh, hitting on your friends. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Keep the good times going with the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Here we go. I'm Randall McDaniel, as a former Minnesota Viking and a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I know how important it is to fuel up to be successful on and off the field. Now, I work with third graders and I see firsthand the positive impact exercise and good nutrition has on my students. As a partner with the Taste of the NFL and the NFL's Play 60 program, I'm proud to do my part to make sure kids get the nutrition they need. Please help us kick hunger in America and encourage an active lifestyle by supporting the Taste of the NFL and the NFL's Play 60 program. Time now to get back in the game. It's Game On TV. Game On is powered by the local. Great to have you with us. It's Ron Rabinovitz, the boyhood friend of one number 42, Jackie Robinson. Great to have you back. When we talk about Jackie Robinson, he's been, we've missed him for years. Right. It, some of the baseball, some of the African American players in baseball say there aren't enough African American players. True. The movie I see sheds a completely positive light and really keeps his legacy shining brightly. Do you do you feel I, that I way? I agree. I agree. Um, you know, he hasn't been getting as much recognition yes. as he should. And we we have a day for Martin Luther King. We have, a, but you know, this was all before Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was a teenager. Rosa Parks, before Rosa Parks, before Civil Rights Movement. 
Jackie was alone. And I mean, he's a tremendous hero. He was, he was a hero to me and to others, a role model. He never drank, he never smoked, he never took drugs, and he never refused to sign a kid's autograph. And for the people that don't know, in the mid 50s, there isn't a more divisive issue in the history of our country than right. what you're talking about right now. Right, exactly. It was tough. It was very bad. I mean, this poor man, what he went through, I mean, I don't know how he did it. And I, I think the genius of Branch Rickey is amazing too. Because Jackie was a good ball player. He wasn't the best, but he had everything that J Branch Rickey wanted. He was educated, he was religious, he was married, all the things he needed. By the way, Harrison Ford plays Branch Rickey in right. the movie, does a tremendous, tremendous job. Tremendous job. The movie's doing one thing. You continue to travel and speak all over the country to kids about this one story. That's right. I, I talk to kids, I talk to organizations, I talk to companies, whoever will listen. <laughs> I mean, I think it's such an important lesson. It was such an amazing story that, that a man would take time to write to a kid. Here he's traveling around the country with his team, and he takes time to write to a kid. And I'm writing back to him. Do you, do you see the uh, mouths wide open and the people just lapping it up? They can't believe the whole thing. They I, can't I, believe I can imagine. It. I mean, from day one, I'll tell you, I got a letter from Jackie Robinson. I went up to school, I said to my, I, I got a letter from Jackie Robinson. Yeah. My friend said, yeah, sure, I got a letter from Donald Duck, you know. <laughs> And I'd pull out the letter and say, oh my God. Yeah. And I used to take these kids with me yeah. to, to meet Jackie. Nice. I wanted to share, I, I wanted to be part of it. You can get more information about this. Your Facebook page is? Uh, www.facebook.com slash Jackie Robinson the Kid. Jackie Robinson the Kid, yep. great stuff. Lots of great pictures. You travel all over. We love you very much. Thanks, Rod. Thanks Take for being care, with us. Buddy. Okay. And, and to you too, Ron, R little. Ronnie <laughs> only here on Game On. It's a busy sports week, so here's your update. From the Purple Pride Planner, the Twins get Baltimore, the Vikings will have training camp in Mankato at the end of July, and the Vikings also open their first preseason game at the Dome against Houston on the 9th. The Lynx in Connecticut, St. Paul Saints get New Jersey on May 16th, and United FC and Tampa Bay. The PGA at the Byron Nelson, champions with their senior championship, NASCAR in Charlotte on the 18th and 26th, and the NHRA at the Lucas Oil Nationals in Brainerd. Get into the game with Golf for the Gift on June 27th, the NHL alumni coming up in July, K-Twin Spare Key on June 10th, and Rock for a Reason right around the corner on May 17th. Game on podcast is with Rod Webby in the A-Train. Get all the inside information, and we'd love for you to drop us a note at GameOnTVMN.com. And that's your Purple Pride Planner. We'd love for you to join us at a Game On taping May 14th at Cooper in St. Louis Park. Meet former NBA champ Devin George, K-Twin personality Riggs, with autographs, a ticket giveaway, and you'll get on TV. So keep your game on with our Facebook and Twitter updates, and we'd love to see you at Game On. Up next, he's a living, breathing, and walking Wikipedia of Minnesota music and a heck of a Twins fan. My partner on the K-Twin Final Call is on deck, but first, it's the K-Twin voice of the fan asking, how do the Twins look to you now? A lot better than, that, than last year, and I'm just surprised as heck. So I'm, I'm having a blast. TC I'm not. TC hat. M hat. TC hat. TC hat. Take some time, little girl, in a little hot Pick up the latest issue of Wheels of Thunder magazine. If it's on wheels, you'll find it in Wheels of Thunder. Full color photos of bikes, trikes, cars, trucks, and even sleds. High performance are right off the street. Mind blowing power, speed, and custom touches. It's all in Wheels of Thunder magazine. Plus, find out about the latest races, rallies, and custom products and services in your area. Check out Wheels of Thunder on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Wheels of Thunder. That's Minnesota's own Rocket Club. They'll be part of the 
Midwest Music Showcase. That's right. We finish each other's sentences. <laughs> Rod Simons, Jason Nagel, we're the tandem on K-Twins Final, Final Call. Call. How are go. you, Jason? I was going to finish that one for Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good to have you back. I'm excited for the Midwest Music Showcase. We're going to start on Wednesday. The four on the floor are going to be the first up. Nice. But don't ask me about the whole schedule. I don't have the whole thing nailed down it's yet. It's really all Minnesota. It is. And it's every Wednesday, uh, every home game for the rest of the season. And then there's a contest to fill in the, the final Wednesday of the season. Nice. But it all starts this week. You know what I didn't know? And we'll talk about the Twins here in a second. You are the music aficionado. I call you the walking, breathing all Wikipedia right. of Minnesota right. music. But I didn't know that Minnesota had such rich roots in such a vibrant landscape of music. You're one of the few people who doesn't know. It's, I mean, the town is, wow. is well known uh, nationwide That's for having a really rich scene like that. You know, there's a hip hop scene and you go to the West Bank for the blues well, scene. Well, I knew there was yeah. some, but I mean, it is, it's vast. It's big, yeah, it's for real. And it's fun to dig into. I do it every uh, Sunday night on K-Twin. Uh, Bobby Z's got the sound right. at 8 o'clock, and he's playing a lot of stuff from his era and the big bands that have broken through. And then I'm getting down and finding the club-level bands. I'm going yeah. to play the band that you can find on a Wednesday night at Cause. He's got an interesting desk at the office. It's a mess. Uh, oh, and it's just nothing but <laughs> CDs. It is. How do you decide, how many, how many songs do you get in an hour? I bet I can do about 13 or 14. How do you decide which ones make the cut? I start by looking at the schedule. I, I look at the bands that you can go see live in the week ahead. Oh, nice. And then I fill in around that. Yeah, because you do mm -hmm. talk about that on the final yep. call. Uh, two or three days before the weekend hits, you're kind of laying it out, kind of a sure. lineup card, if you will, mm -hmm. of what the bands are going to be doing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to do. Your take on the Twins, have you had a, is this better than you expected being around music? and baseball and sports and community and all the stuff you It's do. fantastic. When the Twins are at home, I go over to the park uh, when they're taking batting practice and I get in that pre-game press conference with uh, Garden Hire. Yeah. And to have that kind of access is, is just amazing. Yeah. And we're going to start to have those guys contribute on the final call after the games. And you find yourself watching as a fan or as a little bit of a insider slash fan? I watch a lot closer. Yeah, because I know I'm going to have to talk about it yeah. when the game's over. So, yeah, I'm paying attention to the small things a lot more than I used to. What's your Twitter handle? DJ Jason Nagel. And you love to Twitter's tweet. a blast, especially when there's a live event going on. You can also get him at ktwin.com, and we'll see you on the final call a little bit later tonight because we're always there. Yeah, good to see you, Rob. J-Man is in the house, only here on Game On. We've stepped the 60 second chef outside from his nook inside the kitchen and near our taping area to outside. The beauties of being in Minnesota when the weather is nice can be lived right here. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. You sit outside, good pub food, just good wholesome food, so, I get So when I'm inside, mm -hmm. ordering all the food I want and all the drinks, everything, can I have that outside here? Everything on our menu can come out here. And I, it's packed. Every time I drive by down here in Minneapolis, this is packed. Well, is I'm this biased, the hottest? but I like to think this is the hottest spot on the mall. This is unbelievable. You're right on Nicolette Mall, right steps away from the convention center. There's the Dakota. We got all this around. How popular is this? Is there a wait normally? Well, you know, it's usually open seating for us, but yes, we do go on a wait for the patio, and people will wait for it. Can you get a reservation and, and specify? First come, first serve. First come, first serve, mm -hmm. so it's fair to everybody. Correct. So the next time we're in, hopefully uh, we'll be outside again, because this is just... I'm so glad winter's gone. Yes. You too? I'm on my bike again. That a boy. Yeah. The 60 Second Chef, with a twist, here on Game One. You can now get your game on anytime with the show's official app. Download our game on app for iPhone and Android too. It's full of your favorite shows, sponsor links, photos, and so much more. We link you to our show website and to our partner site, the best Viking fan site out there at purplepride.org. So bookmark us at gameontvmn.com. Ahead, it's the Mayak center stage with the league update front and center only here on Game On. Do you think everywhere you go, people are afraid of you? Back home, they're not afraid. No? No. But you kind of got these, like, intimidating tattoos and stuff. That's that's something what I like. You that's know, what you like? basketball, yeah. Do you think you could design a new tattoo for me? Me? <laughs> See, it looks like you got some technique there. It looks something like this. 
Here you go. <laughs> Teddy bear right back. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> Twin City Wireless doesn't care about our competitors. We care about you, the customer. We care that you get the best prices. Plans starting at $40 a month, unlimited text, talk, international text, and internet. Twin Cities Wireless carries all the latest models of phones and accessories and handles all service providers. At Twin City Wireless, your problem is our problem. Twin City Wireless now has two locations, Brooklyn Center and Northeast Minneapolis. Twin City Wireless is not just business, it's personal. Meat Sauce here. Here's your Bar Abilene trivia question. The question was, who's played the most games for the Wild? The answer, Nick Schultz with 743 from 2001 to 2012. Join me every Tuesday from 8 to 10 at Bar Abilene from Trivia and next week on Game On. It is time for the Mayak Minute. Michael Gallagher back in the house with us. Great to have you here. Good to be here again, sir. It is a, an important weekend for the Mayak Championship Sunday. Let's talk about all the teams that have part participated in that getting here is probably nine-tenths of the battle after the weather. We finally got the nice weather and all that, and now they're able to play in the championship. Last week has been crazy. I mean, you had some teams playing from Sunday to Thursday, 10 games in five days. Wow. And then you had, on Tuesday, a switch to a six-team single elimination format because not everyone was able to get their games in. We've been set back three or four weeks, but this weekend has been fantastic so far, and everything culminates with the championship today. And they're really, really buying into this because they're not scholarship athletes. They're paying their own way, they're taking school very, very seriously, they've got a lot on their plate. And people ask, why D3? NCAA D3 week was two weeks ago, and mm -hmm. they ask, why D3? That was the hashtag going around Twitter. Uh, sports information directors and athletic directors were asking that too, and you said that all NCAA, and that is one of the reasons and the main reason. This is for the love of the game, this is for the love of the sport, and balancing athletics and academics, not an easy thing to do when you're not on scholarship. These athletes have done it very well, and they all, they all had a chance coming into this past week, and now we'll see who comes out on top today. And you know because you did it. You've yeah. been there, done that. Exactly. Before we leave, the softball. Yeah. It's been great. Real quick recap. This past week was uh, insane. <laughs> it was like something we'd never seen before. Caswell Park, North Mankato, 12 teams on Friday come in, eight go home empty handed. Just six or seven hours later, St. Thomas ends up coming out on top on Sunday, uh, the number nine team in the nation. Now they go to an NCAA regional down in Iowa. They're the number one overall seed there. So they're trying to get to an NCAA tournament. Being ninth in the nation, they got a good shot. Without teleprompter. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I appreciate nice it. Nice stuff. We'll have you back uh, very, very soon. Sounds Thank good. you for all you do. Thank you, Rod. Appreciate it. Mike Gallagher, Mayak Ambassador, only here from the Mayak. And that is it for us. Thank you for letting us be a part of your weekend. Don't forget, get all our updates at GameOnTVMN.com. And if you're kind enough, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'd love to keep you in the game. Until next week, make it a great week, okay? And keep your game on.